Nothing drops your cup. No, nothing drops your cup. Nothing drops your cup. Into the black dragon and listen to his knowledge This is Biker 101 and he's professor to the college Posting up videos on YouTube from a direct review Showing you the ins and outs of what not to do Hello, I'm Black Dragon and welcome to my YouTube channel Black Dragon National President Thanks for tuning in Today's video is entitled Can a white person join the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation? And the inspiration of this video came from an email sent to me by one of my subscribers. But first I want to take a moment to remind you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you like this channel and the like button on this video if you find it informative and of course share it if you like it. You can also support this channel at our Patreon page Black Dragon NP. NP stands for National President and if you don't like the monthly donation option presented by Patreon you can send whatever donation you want to my PayPal account, jbunchii at aol.com. That's jbunchii at aol.com. Stands for John Bunch II. And yes, you know you're old when you still have an AOL account. I've had mine since about 1980. But anyway, your donations go to help us buy even better equipment, like this cool microphone, to bring you better videos. So now on to the subject at hand. It comes from this email, and I'm not going to read the whole email, but I'm going to read some of it. Hello, thank you for taking the time to read this email. Hopefully it won't be too long-winded and rambling. You may know me as your YouTube fan, and then he gave me his name. And his letter goes on to say, You know, I was just writing and really trying to avoid the club end of things. Most clubs I ran across suffered from the three Ds drugs, drunks, and drama. Then one night, while looking up old cartoons for my granddaughter, YouTube decided to recommend your video, along with Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, and Gumby. Yeah, go figure. The cartoons for kids these days really suck, but I watched a couple of your videos and got hooked. Apparently in the biker world, I'm a lone wolf. I don't know much about wolf and independent. I don't know much about those parts. But I do know more than I want to know about the alone part. And the alone part sucks. So with your videos and my wife's urging, I started hanging around with a riding club. So he told me about the riding club and how he got into it and how eventually they had to, or they disbanded. Which left him with wanting to explore the Black Sabbath. So we come back into the letter a few paragraphs later, where he said, but it makes me think of something else too. The white guys in your club, do they get static from that? I mean, from the white clubs. I hope that's not against protocol to ask. I don't know if that sort of thing exactly falls under club business, I'm still learning. And if I really hit it off with your local chapter, I'd kind of like to know this beforehand. I live almost smack in the middle of a very well-known one percenter territory. And I don't have anything to do with them, and I really don't want to. They don't even know that I exist. But I know a patch changes all that. So can you see my concern? Now, to me, a biker is a biker, he says. I don't care if you're black, white, Jewish, or transgendered Siamese twins. If you go through what I go through on a bike, then you are the same as me. But I am not the only biker with an opinion. Now am I. No, you're not the only biker with an opinion. But to answer that question, I had to write him a letter, and this is how it reads. In the city you're talking about, when we started there in 2009, our first 10 or 15 guys in that chapter were screaming wild white boys, with only about another seven guys being black. They all wore Black Sabbath on their backs and in their souls and their hearts. I really don't know how the white guys were treated by other whites or other white clubs, as such treatment would not likely occur in front of me. Our club started in 1974 by seven black men who rode on Sundays, hence the name Black Sabbath MC. But it was quickly integrated before 1975. The 
first white man in our club was a Marine named Staff Akers. He was persecuted to high hell by our first Native American named Running Wolf. The father and founder of the motorcycle club, Paul Pep Perry, had to break those two apart all the time because they fought like cats and dogs. He warned Running Wolf one day that if he didn't lay off Staff Akers, that he would put him out of the club for being a racist. And the father damn well meant it. You see, the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club started in San Diego, California, a military town. And since the military was integrated, it was a foregone conclusion that the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club would naturally become integrated as young men made their way in and out of the club during their deployments to San Diego. And consequently, through the years, we have even had all white and all Hispanic chapters. Our brothers are our brothers, proudly, no matter what the hell a racist has to say about it. It has never been easy to be black in America, and it is probably even harder to be a white man who loves black men and others as brothers, and who treats them as equals, respects them as men, and, as in our case, rides with them side by side as a fellow fool patch. I believe nigger lover was the term the racists used in Oklahoma where I grew up. I saw them, the racists, beat up nigger lovers far worse than they ever beat up black guys. When I was a kid, I saw it a hundred times. Black guys like me, they wanted to hurt and defile and put in our place. The nigger lovers, they wanted to kill. There seems to be a special sort of persecution reserved for those white folks who cross over to the other side of the fence with compassion, love, and fellowship in the way that God would have us treat all men whom he created equal. And sometimes that price to pay can be brutal, my friend. I'm reminded of three civil rights workers murdered in Mississippi during the civil rights era and found buried in a car under an earthen dam. Their names were Andrew Goodman and Michael Mickey Schwarmer from New York City and James Cheney from Meridian, Mississippi. Andrew and Michael were both white, nigger lovers, and they paid for that with their lives. So yes, the threat is real, and so too can be the repercussions and the consequences. That being said, it takes a special courage to walk on the other side, with the other side, and as part of the other side, my dear sir. A courage that allows you to hold your head up high and square your shoulders back while high-stepping and swaying back and forth with swagger and fearlessness. This is not a march reserved only for Marines, sailors, airmen, soldiers, and the Coast Guard. This is a march also known by warriors of many nations known by the warriors of the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, and if you are ever accepted within our ranks, black, white, or other, our reputation on two wheels precedes us before we even get there. Since 1974 and still strong, the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation will always be a breed apart a breed of men who stand apart and dare to be brothers through ups and downs, challenges, times thick and thin, lean and skinny, or bountiful. And they will know who you are when your scooter puts by. And to hell with the racist who cannot abide your existence because of the color of some of our skins. Yes! You may have to fight that battle waged by the racists, 
who hate you, the nigger lover. But it's not unlike the battles we have always fought. The battles against black folks who hated us for having white folks. The battle against white folks who hated us for having black folks. The battle against Mexican folks who hated us for having Native American folks. And the battle against Christians who hated us for having Jews. And the battle against Jews who hated us for having Muslims. And the battle against Muslims who hated us for having Sikhs. Yeah, it's a battle you may have to wage. But you will never have to wage it alone. Nor will you ever ride alone again. And despite all that we suffer from, and all the battles we wage, we do not suffer from the three Ds, drugs, drunks, and drama. We are the Black Sabbath MC, a breed apart since 1974, and still strong. So if you are interested still in who we are, send me your number and I will forward it to our president in your area. And he will get in touch with you presently. That's my two cents. Appreciate you guys for taking the time to listen. You can get my books on Kindle and Amazon under Johnny Bunch II, Prospects Bible, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, the Public Relations Officers Bible, and the Sergeant in Arms Bible. Soon to come the President's Bible, so don't forget those. We appreciate you all. Thanks for tuning in. And get skinny.